I'm gonna catch some heat for this, but Dave Ramsey might actually be keeping you broke. Here's the reality. Dave Ramsey has a very powerful message and he's very effective at delivering it, that you need to get out of debt. And for a lot of people, that's true. They're up to their eyeballs in credit card debt. They've got student loan debt. All of this is sucking them dry. Meanwhile, they're driving the newest cars and living in an apartment somewhere and they have nothing. They don't have a savings account. They don't have an emergency fund. They are literally less than a thousand dollars away from being homeless. And that's the case for a majority of Americans. In fact, if you look at any consumer reports, you can see that America's credit card debt is climbing. But that doesn't mean that that philosophy is a one size fits all and a way to live your life. You know, the reality is that there are a lot of opportunities for you to get out of debt, stay out of debt, but really does that create wealth? I recently talked with a client who was in his late 70s. Unfortunately, the man had saved his way to retirement. And over the course of 55 years, he'd managed to amass $400,000. That's quite an impressive feat. Meanwhile, raising four kids, he and his wife were now faced with the reality of trying to live out the rest of their life on $400,000. Now, that may seem like something that's doable, but if you really think about it, if they lived another 10 years, that would only give them $40,000 a year to live on. That's almost at the poverty line. Now, assuming they have their house paid for, it might be doable, but there's no trips involved. There's no way to go spoil the grandkids. There's no opportunity for them to splurge on things because they're limited in what they have. The reality is, had that man used leverage or debt in his life, he maybe have been able to put himself in a very different position. You know, Dave's got a lot of really good points about getting out of debt and creating an emergency fund. And I agree that personal debt can be a killer. I mean, you're talking interest rates of 25% on something you bought at Target that you really probably didn't need. Dave's philosophy on that is a good one. But the personal things that you can do that are much different is where are you going to hit your financial plateau? If you're hurrying to pay off your house, you're paying off an asset that is appreciating and that's a good deal, but you're replacing your hard earned cash after taxes into an asset that provides you no financial benefit other than now you're paid off and there's less owed on it. Should something catastrophic happen in your life, the bank now has more equity. You're also not putting yourself in a position to get anyone else to work for you but you. So the minute you stop or you're incapacitated, you're unable to work, all your hopes and dreams are tied up in that one asset. But let's take this scenario. Let's say that you have the ability to pay an extra $1,500 a month on your mortgage. That's fantastic. But that also means that if you put that toward your mortgage, you're paying down on a single asset that you're still the only provider for the source of income to pay that. But if you were to take that $1,500 and put it in a savings account, and every two years buy another asset. Let's say you bought another single family home. You're able to rent that out and create a positive cash flow that now someone else is going to work every day to pay you and allow you to benefit from that. They're paying down the mortgage, so now you're getting two mortgages paid out of your one effort. You're getting cash flow from it, so you're getting their money coming to you to help you buy groceries, so instead of your salary, you get your salary plus some. But here's the biggest benefit. If you simply pay down on your mortgage, you receive no tax benefits whatsoever on that. So here you are, taking your money, paying Uncle Sam, and then paying down on your mortgage. But if you bought an investment property, Uncle Sam is gonna allow you something called depreciation. That depreciation is going to save you massive amounts of taxes now and in the future. You also have the ability that as that asset grows in value, when you sell that asset, there are tax deferred ways to move that money into another asset. So you're able to grow money based on someone else's effort by using someone else's money for the majority of the purchase price and allow you to be the sole beneficiary of it. So I don't wanna say Dave is all wrong, that debt is bad, but I just showed you one clear example where debt can be a great thing. You know, that really brings you to a place where you hit a ceiling because there's only so much you can do. But if you can use leverage and use other people's time and money to get you where you wanna go, and you were able to repeat that scenario of $1,500 in a savings account, that would mean by the time you got to year 10, you would be buying three or four assets a year with the cash flow that's coming off the deal, plus your own savings, as long as you continue to be disciplined. So the reality is, is if you're going to be able to grow your financial ability to become job free, 
to really own your time, you're going to have to leverage other people. You're going to have to find a way to do that. One of the easiest ways to do that is in real estate. One of the easiest ways to leverage real estate is by paying attention to the tax code and the benefits that are available there to you. So by doing these things, you're able to get yourself in a position where you have other people allowing you to step away from your J-O-B in a way that makes your life not change, in fact, probably improve because now you have your time back and you have other people funding your lifestyle. See, the reality is if you own 10 rentals and one of your tenants gets hurt, sick, unemployed, moves away, you're sitting in a position where one-tenth of what you're doing just changed. That's probably something you can recover from, especially if you have an emergency fund and cash flow from your other assets. But if you are sick for one-tenth of the year and you're the sole owner of your home and no other source of income, you've now put yourself in a situation that can be catastrophic. So while I'm not really wanting to debate Dave Ramsey, I'm just simply showing you another option that may allow you to take that thought process of getting out of personal credit card debt, living within your means, buying cars that make sense for the amount of money you make, and then using that extra capital that you would have been paying to a credit card, that you would have been paying to a very expensive car, and use that to create real financial wealth by then involving the bank in a leveraged position on what I would call smart debt or good debt, because there is a lot of good debt out there it comes really truly comes down to who is paying the debt. Bad debt is you paying it. Good debt is someone else paying it. And that comes through owning assets. You know, my personal experience in this whole thing is that I've been able to create a real estate portfolio well over $100 million that I don't have to come up with all the capital necessary to deal with it. I'm not the one that's finding all the deals. I'm not the one that's dealing with it daily. I'm not the one that's leasing it out. I'm not the one that's actually financed the full amount. I have gotten partners in every level of my business and I've leveraged their time. I've leveraged their money. I've leveraged their experience and I've leveraged all of that. So now every single day, I have the ability to create the work of 15 people because of leverage. Debt is no different. You're allowed to create wealth for yourself at a fixed rate when you use debt. And that's how I've been able to create a real estate portfolio that now takes care of most of my needs outside of my daily job. And that's how you can do the very same thing by using leverage. So when you're starting a business where you're starting to buy real estate, you have limited capital, you have limited resources. We know that 90% of businesses in America fail in the first five years. The reason for that is because they're undercapitalized. But if you're allowing investors to invest in your business that gives you a solid foundation to create the advertisements you need, goes after the market share you're looking for, helps you to get into the location that you need because you're not bootstrapping it and coming out from the, the gate behind the eight ball and broke. This is the kind of thing where leverage can be a very good thing. You know, I can tell you from personal experience, there's been a lot of people that have bootstrapped their businesses and they've done very well. But I can also tell you there are 10 times the number of people who've put together a business plan, involved investors, allowed investors to make a great return while being completely passive on the opportunity, but giving them a bigger stage to stand on, a bigger platform to create from. And with that ability, they've been able to make the deal work. The reality is, if you set your sights on you being the sole everything, it's really a recipe for failure. Because honestly, most business owners and most real estate investors are really good at one thing, but it's usually not every aspect of the business. In fact, most real estate investors are really good at something other than real estate. What they're using is the leverage of that money that's coming out of that other deal to leverage real estate. The people that are successful in their businesses leverage the experience of others in the marketing department, in the customer service department. They have the vision, they have the ability, they've cast that vision, investors get involved, people get on board, and a brand grows. So here's the reality. If we wanna wind this down and wrap this up, it's pretty simple. If you combine Dave Ramsey's principles with the idea that debt can be good for you, you can come up with some really great solutions that will allow you to take both your personal and investing life to another level. See, if you got credit card debt, but you're trying to invest in real estate, it doesn't make a lot of sense because you're getting an 8% mortgage on something that's gonna grow and you're paying 25% to somebody else on something you've already used. The reality is get out of debt, get out of personal debt, 
first. Put goals in front of yourself where you're driving the kind of car you can afford and still meet those goals. Take the time to get your personal finances in order and get that emergency fund. But then after that, it's time to start evaluating where good debt can play a part in leveraging your life and growing your wealth in a way that your personal finances just won't be able to. I mean, honestly, the last thing you want to be able to do is save $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 a year, and after the course of 40 years, been able to put away a half a million dollars and try and live on that for the rest of your life. So closing this up, you can use debt, you should use debt, but make sure you're using debt in a good way that is leveraging your ability to create generational wealth for you and your family.